Welcome to Good Life. I'm Dean Wilson. I'm so glad you've joined us. You can always find us at goodlifetelevision.org. Many of you are finding us there uh, from all over the world, 64 countries at, at last count. So thank you. Thank you for joining us. We're, we're here to inspire. We're here to empower, uplift, encourage, um, and honor. Um, and we hope that we're doing that. Uh, but we're we're certainly glad that you're part of our little family here. And we've had some amazing guests. You can find all the interviews actually at goodlifetelevision.org. And you can also find what we call power clips, um, which are kind of the great moments from a lot of those interviews. So I want to welcome my guest, Chris Orlando is with me. Welcome, sir. How are you, Dean? Good to see you, my friend. Yeah, thank you for coming on. Um, so on this show, we've, we've had a lot of different kinds of people. And uh, today we... We have somebody who's in business, and also um, Chris has a has a passion for sports, and we're going to talk about that as well. He's in addition to um, some of his own business work um, as an executive, he's he is uh, and, and in business development. He's he's had a role in helping the NFL Alumni Association. Is it an association? It is NFL an association. Alumni. Yes. Yeah. NFL Alumni Association, and we're going to talk about that too in a minute. But but I thought, Chris, just start by just kind of tell us a little bit about yourself. Where did you grow up and kind of a little bit about your your road? Sure, absolutely. Uh, born and raised outside of Philadelphia, so uh, a fan of all things Phillies, uh, Phillies, Eagles, Sixers, Flyers, what have you. Um, played uh, Division three football in college, started out at Rowan University in South Jersey, uh, ended up transferring my junior year to a small private school in Pennsylvania, Ursinus College. Uh, made a, a nice little playoff run while we were there as well. Uh, I was fortunate while I was in college, did an internship for the Hartford. Uh, when I graduated, walked into a job, which is a, a good thing. And yep. uh, I wholesaled uh, financial products, so mutual funds and annuities. Uh, did a, a brief stint with the Hartford, uh, moved to ING, uh, which is where I got to meet the lovely Donna Reed. Um, and uh, in 2001, opted, uh, had an opportunity to move out to California with Jackson National. Uh, oh. While I was with Jackson, they didn't have the best products at the time. Um, and, and I realized that life is about relationships. So yeah. I think in, in business, in life, and everything that we do, uh, you're at point A, you're trying to get to point B. Problem is most people have no idea what point B is. So uh, I ended up starting my own distribution company, would work with advisors and get an understanding of how they're running their business as a business, uh, and then try to coach them uh, along the way. So I've raised money for all different kinds of products and projects over the years. And uh, about 10 years ago, uh, a good friend of mine asked me what I thought about American football in India. And uh, he's a, a good friend, so I probably had a colorful response, but... Uh, <laughs> I was very intrigued by the opportunity. Um, 1.3 billion people, burgeoning middle class, democratic society, English speaking, um, but they're very cricket oriented. Um, had some concerns, had some reservations, uh, made a few phone calls, uh, did my due diligence. So uh, it, it seemed like a, a great opportunity. And uh, 10 years later, we've started out with American football and then we've kind of changed the landscape of India through sports. So for the last 10 years, we've built the infrastructure to commercialize university sports. Um, and during that process, I, I didn't, I understood business, I understood sports. Um, so I didn't know what I didn't know. Uh, had an opportunity, uh, got my master's degree at Columbia in sports management, really twofold to kind of learn what I didn't know, uh, and then get tied into their network of, of people, which is a ridiculous oh. network. Um, and through that uh, opportunity, I actually connected with the uh, NFL alumni as well to help them out on, on a couple of their missions. Ah, wow. What a journey. It, it, it's been a journey, my friend. So uh, yeah. I've always said that if I'm not making your life better, I'm just wasting your time. So uh, <laughs> I, I've been with that mindset, very fortunate to kind of help move people in the right direction. That's fantastic. And, you know, I found over the years that we're all kind of in the same boat in terms of not knowing what we don't know. Absolutely. None of us know <laughs> what we don't know. Yeah. It's, it's a really actually interesting thought to have that, especially in today's climate of 
anger and hatred and fighting on social media, not a lot of people are just willing to have the, the idea that maybe I don't know everything. You know, maybe there's a possibility there's like a 20% there that I don't, I'm not, you know, right on, you know, I think that we had that little, just a touch of humility and be a good thing. I, I, I wish I didn't only know 20%. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. For you and I, maybe 40. Yeah. So, we'll just round it up to 40. <laughs> absolutely. absolutely. Um, so, yeah, I was, I, I actually was in the brokerage business that Donna may have told you for, for a number of years. And so you were one of those guys that would, you know, Bring us golf balls and golf balls by you. We love you guys. A absolutely. <laughs> yeah. it, it's interesting. I, I I often tell financial advisors that still come to me for 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 advice and whatnot to really utilize the wholesaler. Uh, I know it's disgusting the amount of wholesalers that are calling on you and buying for your time, but the good ones can truly add value to your business. Yes, I, I totally agree. Yeah, totally agree. Um, so let, let, let's talk a little bit about this just because I'm interested in, and, and I want to get to the NFL alumni in, in, a, in a moment as well, but um, India, I, I did, you know, I, I've done a little bit of work in India. You, you've done more than I have, but, but talk a little bit about, for, because I think a lot of people don't understand that we were talking off air about the demographics and just the power of the, what's happening and what is going to happen, but just talk about that for a moment. Yeah, absolutely. So if you think of it in correlation to the United States. It's five times the amount of people in a third of the space. So huh. there, there is no such thing as social distancing in, in, in India because their, their cities have 28, 30 million people. So uh, what, what kind of intrigued me to the, the sports aspect of it, of if you think of the NFL, there's 32 franchises uh, in the NFL. And I believe there's eight or nine cities that have north of a million people. In India, there are 52 cities that have north of a million people. Oh my goodness! Yes, so it's 28 uh, million. You're saying the big cities have 28 million? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mumbai, I mean, I was just, Mumbai just has. Assume. Yeah, Mumbai's up in that range. Delhi is up in that range. So yeah, a small city for them is seven, eight million people. Yeah, that's incredible. That's yeah, I mean, I was just thinking about the Dallas. Fort Worth Metroplex, where I lived for 10 years, and I think there was 7 million, right. and it seemed like too much to handle. Absolutely. That's and the density. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say Dallas Fort Worth, you know, <laughs> 35 miles wide, or, you know, it's, it's right. spread out a lot, but wow. So, so when you're talking about um, the opportunity in terms of sports, that, that and I loved, uh, I loved one of the, the quotes that I read um, about sports, maybe, oh yeah. Nelson Mandela. From Nelson Mandela, the philosophy of the sports have the power to change the world. I actually think that that's really true, but reflect on that for a moment, kind of what you're trying to do. Absolutely. So if you think about life, we've always heard that education is the key to life. So the question then becomes, well, how do you learn? So some people learn through reading a textbook, some people learn through sitting through lectures. Some people learn through hard knocks of life. And some people, which I truly believe, some people learn through sports. So it teaches you how to do teamwork, how to work towards a common goal, how to overcome adversity, um, how to win humbly. Um, so there's a tremendous amount of things that, that you learn through sport. I often reflect uh, when I give presentations uh, across the country or, or when I'm doing stuff internationally about all the benefits that I've received through sports um, and the relationships that, that I've built, that I know that if I'm ever in a bad situation in life, I've got a Rolodex of, of numbers of people that I can call through my sports careers that will drop everything and do what they can to help me. So to me, I, I think that sport has a, a tremendous power. Uh, and like that Nelson Mandela quote says, uh, it speaks to kids in a language that they understand. So it, it's an exciting yes. opportunity to be a part of. <laughs> yes. And, you know, and you're, when you're saying those different things, it teaches it certainly, you know, yeah, winning humbly, graciously, losing, you know, I mean, we, <laughs> I mean, I'm, so I've got two boys, I've had two girls that have played sports as well, but the two boys have really been on kind of 
on steroids, no pun intended, but <laughs> they, you know, traveling teams. Sure. And we have had some heartbreakers. I mean, like, I just, I just, now we've, we've had some game winners, you know, that are wonderful. And how great is that? But life is not all game winners. I oh, mean, absolutely. there's quite a bit of losing involved in life. There's quite a bit of failure, you know, Absolutely. You totally blow the game. Let's say, how do you, what do you do? You know, I think that's amazing. Uh, like I said, so I've played football since I was six years old through my senior year in college. Very fortunate, very blessed. Uh, I've been on some amazing teams and I think it wasn't until my junior year in college where I had my 10th loss in my entire career. So I was not used to losing, um, but it, it's funny if I think of my entire career, I can tell you every game that we lost and how we lost it and why we lost it. If I tried to do that for the games that I won, it, it doesn't resonate with you as well. So in loss and defeat, there are so many more things that you can learn about yourself and learn how to overcome them. So I, I think defeat is a beautiful thing. I get a little concerned. I don't have any kids, but I, I've got nieces and nephews. Uh, and I know, remember watching them grow up and, and playing different sports where they give out the participation trophy and everyone wins <laughs> and they don't keep score. I, I can't right. keep my brain around that because you're, you're, you're taking away opportunities from those kids to learn things. That's exactly right. Well, that to kind of defeats the point of what we were just talking about. I mean, if you, if it's, if, you know, if it's about making sure that everybody, I mean, what, I mean, it's, it's kind of like with parenting, they talk about, you know, you know, don't smooth the path out for your child, you know, because we, the, the, the tendency can be, let's protect them from all suffering, sure. keep them in a bubble because they'll be better off. Now, right. obviously we need safety. We need protection at some level, but it's good to, to suffer. It's good to struggle. It's good to learn how to keep going, how to pick yourself up. I mean, there's so much there. You, you can't appreciate the wins if you don't have the losses. Yeah. Yeah. So this is really profound. I think we just, I don't know, we just made something. Romance. It's a bromance. <laughs> this is a bromance of sorts. At least one way. Absolutely. One way. Oh, it goes both ways, my friend. Absolutely. <laughs> um, so let's talk a little bit about the NFL and what, what you're doing. I know you've I mean you've you've had you've had a lot of plate spinning, it seems like, in your career, but but one of them um, is the the NFL Alumni Association. So the NFL Alumni Association is an organization committed to the goal of serving, informing, and assisting retired players in their post-NFL lives. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and I liked the simplicity of this next statement, which um, talks about who the alumni is. And then it says that it's also carried a traditional message, uh, mission of caring for kids. So in one sense, you know, it's pretty simple. It seems like the mission of this is kids mm -hmm. caring for kids, which probably takes on a lot of different forms, but talk about the NFL alumni association, what you have done with them, what you're, and what you're trying to get accomplished in service of, of kids. Sure. Um, so as I stated earlier, I think in life and business, everything you're trying to get to point B, you're at point A trying to get to point B. I'm a, a big believer in Stephen Covey's seven habits of highly effective people. So begin with the end in mind. Yeah. So if I understand what your end goal is and we can crystallize that vision, all it is then is a matter of working backwards and figuring out what moves do we have to make in order to get there. So when I connected with the NFL Alumni Association, uh, they said we have two missions that we try to accomplish. Number one is we care for kids. Number two is we care for our own. So I wanted to kind of look at that opportunity and say, okay, where can I add value to those missions? So when it came to caring for kids, um, obviously all the different camps that the NFL alumni does and whatnot around the country um, it is a great benefit. Uh, I brought to the table an organization called Pay for Ed, uh, and they're an organization that it's a, a technology software that educates kids, parents on the true cost of going to college. So it will show you that uh, if you're looking at five different schools, um, it will show you what the true cost of going to, unfortunately, most universities, 
They want you to come in the door. They don't really care when you leave the door and how much it's going to cost you on the way out. Um, so if we right. can educate them with the tools to find out truly what their cost is and give them financial literacy and make them understand that if you go to UCLA, it's going to cost you X. If you go to USC, it's going to cost you Y. And here's the benefits of, of both of them. And then show you a path of, of how to kind of manage that debt throughout your lifetime. So I thought that was a great way of helping in a different fashion for caring for kids. Um, that is and then, a great idea. Yeah. And, and then, so yeah, pay for ed. If you have a chance, pay for ed.com, check it out. A phenomenal resource. Um, and, and would love to, to link the, the Turner Foundation up with those guys as well, because I know you guys are doing some, some great things over there. Um, yeah, yes. That makes a lot of Payfored.com or, or dot? Payfored.com. Dot com. Payfored.com. That's the, well, I've got kids. You've got, you got kids that, that this afternoon. It, it's funny. Every person that I've shown this software to and I've had them do a demo for, everyone's like, why didn't I find you? I, I had a kid that just graduated school. Why didn't I find you four years ago? It, right. it's one of those so yeah, it, it's definitely a, a fantastic resource. Um, so that was the mission of, of what I tried to bring value to the NFL alumni for the kids program. For the second part is caring for their own. Uh, again, being a wholesaler, uh, as we had talked about a little bit earlier, and really consulting financial advisors on how to run their business as a business. Uh, I did a lot of work with succession planning. So if you think, oh. of, yeah, if you think of a, a player when they're done playing, they're going to be the average lifestyle or the average career of an NFL player is three and a half years. So you figure they graduate college 22 years old, give or take. So most of them, by the time they're 26, are done. So now they have to figure out now from 26 until I'm no longer it's a long on time. Earth, what am I going to do? Yeah. And I said, what type of support network, if I was that individual, would I need to have in place in whatever career endeavors I go through? So we created the Athlete Advisory Network. So think of financial advisors, real estate, uh, attorneys, CPAs, marketing specialists, business specialists, digital um, specialists. So all of these different pieces that will help you um, and support you going through your, your business. So the NFL alumni has got 40 chapters across the country. And uh, we're building out these networks for, for each chapter to help the players. Wow. So the what was the name of it again? Athletes Advisory? Athlete Advisory Network. Athlete Advisory Network. So right. so you built you like helped launch that or correct. correct. And then now it's going into every market where there are NFL alumni? Yes. Wow. See, you know, there's there's two problems I can think of in that area. Mm -hmm. Um one being there is, I don't I think it's true. There is a, you know, rumor that it doesn't go very well financially for some of these athletes. Mm -hmm. Cause imagine getting rich, really young, <laughs> like really rich, really young, you know, what could go wrong? Yeah, I mean, sure. So there's that. <laughs> and then there's just the, I just think that they're probably preyed upon. I mean, you hear some of these stories about, you know, guys are just swindled and they're trusting somebody and they end up. And so I think that's wonderful to hear because it kind of solves both of those problems. Sure. Trusted, Absolutely. somebody who's trusted and somebody who's going to help them not, you know, make bad decisions. Sure. I mean, again, if you think of, unfortunately, uh, there are some bad financial advisors in this world in any industry that there's a few uh, bad right. apples that, that spoil the bunch. But most financial advisors try to find people that have money. So athletes typically have money and a lot right. of them don't have the wherewithal and, and know which decisions make it as most young people don't know which decisions that we don't, we do a horrible job of financial literacy uh, in my yeah. opinion in this country. So a lot of kids that are coming out don't know what they're doing. Fortunately for the vast majority of them, they're making 50 grand a year when they come out of college or, or what have you. So they don't have to worry about these types of things, but the guys that, that are making a couple of million bucks every year, uh, you've got a lot of people vying on them for those dollars right. and, and everyone has, Hey, I've got the best scheme to, to, to help you into the future. And right. to me, it's, it's let, let's put a, a support network in place so that they've got a, a number of different people to bounce ideas off of. And, and that way they'll feel much more comfortable. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's, it's always probably a red flag if somebody's offering you 300% returns when interest rates are like 0.25. <laughs> <Yes. Yeah. laughs> like, there might be a little bit of a red Spiny flag. It should go off at that point, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. The alert system has to go on at that point. Yes. Um, how would, how, that's a great point that I've never thought of. I mean, well, I've, maybe I've thought of it, but you, you articulated it. We don't do a very good job of financial literacy with young people. That is really true. Have you thought about tackling that one? I mean, have you thought about? Absolutely. So I, again, think of the NFL alumni with their two missions, caring for kids. Uh, yeah. I've got a, a dear friend of mine who I worked with when I was at ING is a, uh, a motivational speaker now. He is a, a brain cancer survivor and he tells a very heartwarming story of all the, the trials and tribulations that he had gone through um, in his life through brain surgery, brain cancer, and what have you. And he always tells a story of, he sat down with his father once he got diagnosed and said, dad, I've got my long-term care in place, my life insurance, and went through every little step as a financial advisor or as a, as a wholesaler would do. He went through every step of his financial picture says, that's all taken care of. I've done a great job. I'm good to go there. I can spend 100% of my effort taking care of this brain cancer and, and beating it, which he has done. So he now travels around the country delivering motivational speeches uh, and talks a lot about financial literacy for kids. So I'm bringing him in. We're going to do a, a tour of all the uh, uh, chapters and, and have him speak to the chapters to, to help educate the young kids. Um, so yeah, any opportunities or, or any people that have an interest in financial literacy and, and can add value, the more the merrier. That's fantastic. That's a great idea. Uh, uh, that's a big need, I think. Yeah, oh, and I've got I've got an idea in that area, but I'm not going to say it on the air because somebody will steal it. So okay. you and I can talk offline. Fair enough. <laughs> this could be the one. This could be the idea we've been waiting for. Um, if so you tell me wanna... something about a 300% return, though. My spidey sense <laughs> might go off. <laughs> 300% only you know now. <laughs> Every caller in the next 90 seconds gets the 300%. <laughs> uh, I want to just tell you, we only have a few minutes left, but I want to touch on, on this partnership uh, you're helping with, speaking of caring for kids. Uh, the Turner Foundation, who's the sponsor of this program, mm -hmm. um, has been doing work with kids for many years and through after school programs and tutoring and different things that they do in community centers in difficult neighborhoods. Uh, there is a, a, a relationship, a partnership forming with the NFL Alumni Association. And, and Chris, could you just speak to kind of that and kind of what's what's happening with that? Sure, absolutely. And you guys are doing fantastic work. And I know these kids and these families are very excited to be in your program and have pride in being in your program. And again, anytime there's an opportunity for the NFL alumni to fulfill one of their missions, which is caring for kids, if, if they can do things where if the different events that you guys are putting on, we'll have players there, um, I, I know with, with this program that you have, uh, we've got a, a number of players that have different focuses and different charities on kids. Um, so yeah, we're very excited about the, the partnership with Turner and, and think that we're going to do some amazing things together. That's so great. That's really exciting for, for us. And, and, and so this is, I mean, I'm just thinking about the model. So the NFL Alumni Association has chapters, I heard you say, so like 50 or how many in the United 40 States? chapters across the country. How many? 40. 40. 40. Okay, so four, so, in the, so those 40 chapters then, so the NFL is then looking for nonprofit partners that line up missionally with what they're trying to do? Sure, a a absolutely. So it, it's a scenario where, again, to me, and, and I like to always put all the cards on the table, say, hey, this is where we're at. This is where we're trying to go. And again, it goes back to that. We, we don't know what we don't know. So I'm always encouraging people that if you see a hole in our system and you think you can plug it please by all means come to us and say hey here here's an area of my expertise that that you guys could utilize and and we're in again our, our missions are, are very simple caring for our own and caring for the kids um so if, if wow. you can help us achieve that goal we love you yeah that's beautiful chris i want to ask you just at the end i hadn't planned on this but i, I so i've heard a lot about you from my colleague here at the Turner Foundation, who's known you a long time. Long time. I won't share the nicknames. <laughs> That's kind of personal. 
Um, I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, so uh, one of the things I've gathered about you, this is, you know, I've only talked to you a couple of times and I've, but I've heard a lot about you, but one, and just here, just being with you today, one of the things I can kind of gather about you in sense is that you, you're a true believer in terms of you're a, you're a passionate person for what you're, whatever it is you're passionate about, you're passionate about and you're doing. And there seems to be a joy. So talk about that, like, because let's pretend like for a minute we're talking, because we are, we're talking to a, a young person somewhere who's starting out on a career or has an entrepreneurial spirit, but doesn't really know how to focus it or where to focus or what to do. Speak to, speak to that young person right now and, sure. and talk about that. Absolutely. I, I would definitely recommend getting a coach. If you think about, again, my sports background, I, I've always had a coach. And if you think of the, the greatest athletes, so you think Tiger Woods, he's had a, a coach. So you're saying he's the best golfer ever. Why would he need a coach? Because he's going to look at things and watch you do your swing and look at it from a different light. So he's going to see something that you're not seeing. So I highly recommend, I think every person should have a coach, should have a mentor. I, I've got a few that, that I call upon to kind of help me. Um, and then the other thing I would say is, I, again, figure out what your point B looks like. Really spend some time focusing and crystallizing what that vision is. So once you understand what your end goal is, now every decision that you're making, think about it. Does it put me closer to my goal or further away from my goal? So if it puts right. me further away from my goal, okay, do we need to realign and, and reassess what our goal is? Do we, do we have that right vision? Um, if we do, then why would I ever do that if it's going to take me away from my goal? Uh, and right. then on the flip side, if, if that activity is going to put me closer to my goal, go all in. I mean, 100% of your effort, there's no reason to, to only partially do it. If, if you're going to do it, do it. So Beautiful. That would be my, my big thing. Have a coach and, and crystallize your vision. Beautiful. And write it down. I found putting it on paper, even reading your, I read something that you're working on and just, it's so clear. It's actually a biblical principle I've read that uh, something about writing it down, write the vision down, you know. Sure. Great, Chris, this is fantastic. Thank you for the time. And um, we're looking forward to, to seeing what develops with the Turner Foundation, the NFL Alumni Association and to help kids. It's, Absolutely. You know, keep it simple. And then hopefully we'll Guys be like able to take me. the uh, Turner Foundation to uh, India as well. And uh, we can help those kids over there also. Uh, now we're talking. Yeah. I yeah. Like we'll do a second segment on that. Thanks, Chris. Thanks for coming Thanks, on. Dean. Appreciate it, my friend. Have a wonderful day. And we'll see you all next time.